Hey everyone, I'm here with Seth. He is one of our engineers at Southland Trailers, and we're gonna to talk to him today about what it means to have an engineered trailer. So I think um, engineering, it can be used kind of in the industry as a bit of a buzzword, um, but for the most part, when we talk about what our engineered trailers are is, we're doing a process where we're going through a loop to try to get our trailers um, better and better and better all the time right. so that we can deliver value to the customer. And um, a second portion of that is uh, a focus on safety to the public um, because like the engineering profession is all about making sure that the public uh, can trust the products that we build. And we can <clears throat> talk about how we call it an FEA and I want to make sure we elaborate on that point as well because when we take the trailer and actually put it into the computer, we do a whole analysis on that, which we'll show you pictures of and dive a little bit deeper into, but just to, to captivate that point, because when I do say an engineered trailer, this is kind of the back end process that is happening. So kind of explain what that FEA stands for and, and why we do it and the benefits from it to, to remove as much steel as possible from that trailer, make it as light as possible, but as strong as possible, create more value for the end customer. Exactly. Yeah, so the first step in our process, really, it starts with uh, computer-aided design uh, software. So, and uh, we'll create a full model of the entire trailer structure. Uh, and then from that, we can um, take that and deliver the production drawings that they need, of course, to, to produce that trailer. But then on our back end side, we will do FEA analysis. So FEA stands for finite element analysis. And what is ultimately happening is the computer breaks the trailer into like a million tiny little cubes. Mm -hmm. And then the software, we can uh, add a load and we can add our fixed points such as axles or your coupler where the trailer isn't allowed to move. And then when we apply the load, it runs through a series of calculations that looks at how that load spreads through the trailer through each of those tiny little building blocks. And then what it gives us is a diagram that shows us uh, where in the trailer there's no load and where there's the kind of the hot spots. Right. And then we know we can reinforce those areas and then take material out of the areas that aren't seeing that stress. Uh, and then that way we can overall reduce that, uh, the cost of the trailer. Right, so on this trailer we have a engineered beam. So instead of using your traditional I-beam style of classification for your two main rails running down the center here, we have went to an engineered beam, which again is contributed to running an FEA analysis and saying, hey, there's a better way to make this trailer. And through running that analysis, that showed us if we use different materials, different properties, different styles of steel, we can create this trailer to have more strength than I-beam and use less material weight per foot in a engineered beam, right? Exactly. Up top, we just have a regular 3 8 mild steel flange that we weld onto the top. But then jumping into the actual web, it is one singular piece the whole way through. So depending if that trailer's 24 feet, 26, all the way up to 36 feet, 40 feet kind of thing, that's one continuous piece of web that is cut and brought in and then welded to the 3 8 flange. So with the web, um, we can use high tensile steel to ultimately reduce the height of the beam and as well as the thickness of the web itself. So when the beam's loaded, uh, the top of the beam goes into compression and the bottom of the beam goes into tension. So it's kind of like a spring that's starting to be pushed down. And what happens is there's a lot of stress concentration at the top and bottom of the beam near the, where the flange meets the web. And so by going to a 90 KSI uh, steel, we can uh, absorb a lot more stress in that without having to increase the thickness of the web. And then we are also able to reduce that beam uh, overall height. And then that way we can bring the trailer loading deck closer to the ground. Nice. And so again, 90 KSI, which means 90,000 pounds per square inch. Exactly. Explain that a little bit more too, so we know. Yeah, sounds good. So the way that it works with steel ratings is it, it's ultimately um, about the amount of stress that that material can hold. So when you have a beam and you put a load on it, um, that load starts to be distributed, but it's not a perfectly even distribution. And instead, it'll um, there'll be parts basically where the beam is being supported 
that it concentrates. So as that load passes through that steel, all that steel has to hold that load. So in the thin sections, it's gonna be holding a lot more load than in those kind of the thicker sections. Mm -hmm. So then in those thin sections, by having a higher yield strength, basically, it'll be able to hold that without deforming. And then a super unique thing as well that we do is we build in camber. So from our other previous videos, we have a commercial line, Ren series, and those are big 53 foot straight decks, step decks, B trains, hauling upwards of 60,000 pounds. Um, and we've taken that technology and brought it down into the goose decks as well. And we've built in camber. So like in a 53 foot straight deck, we would have almost two to three inches of camber over a 53 foot span. In a gooseneck trailer, we will have now anything from a half an inch camber all the way up to an two inches of camber, depending on the length of that unit. It has two purposes. The first one is related to the actual, um, the structure and the strength of the beam. So by adding in that camber, as it's flexed, there's a lot more of the web that's not in tension. It's kind of in the neutral zone. And so we have less material that we have to add in to support that load. Uh, so it does make, ultimately, by adding that camber, it makes the beam lighter overall. And then the second one is just purely aesthetics. As you load the trailer, it starts to flatten out. So if you add that camber in, a fully loaded trailer will just look like a nice straight trailer on the road. But if you had a, a beam without camber, like a standard structural I beam trailer, and you put load on it, it kind of looks flexed in the middle, uh, which just doesn't look good. Yeah, and then it's always under tension, always under stress. Exactly. And it fatigues and wears faster. Correct. Right, as opposed to with the camber built in, you want it to basically push back to neutral when fully loaded, and that means the trailer's not under stress at any time. It's actually in a resting state, which is perfect for you. And overall, the strength and integrity of that trailer will last you longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing I definitely want to touch on is our strength to weight ratio. Strength to weight ratio, again, is to take out as much steel as possible with an engineered trailer to make that trailer as light as possible, but strong as possible, okay? The old school mentality is always to take the trailer and in those weak points, throw in as much steel as possible, beef it up, add more steel to it, but that hurts you in the long run because you're carrying around more trailer weight than you need to. So if you take out as much as possible and add in proper materials, your trailer is going to be lighter, which makes you haul more payload. And again, payload, break that word up, more money in your pocket. Yeah, I think you basically hit the nail on the head. What we're doing in the engineering department when we're working on these designs and trying to improve them all the time is we're running simulations uh, and we're doing a lot of lifetime and overload testing to understand uh, when we apply a load to a trailer, what are the components that are lasting and what are the components that aren't gonna last? And then we can selectively reinforce where we need to reinforce and then we can remove material where it doesn't need to be there. Anyone can build a trailer, uh, you know, from standard, you know, available steel and that sort of thing. But if you don't know exactly how the load's being distributed in that unit, uh, what's gonna happen is you have to make everything strong. And so you're just paying more to build that trailer uh, because you're just paying for extra steel that doesn't need to be there. So what we're doing is we're taking as much steel as possible away without reducing the lifetime of that trailer at all. Uh, and then that way, when you're buying the trailer, you're paying for only the steel that actually needs to be there to make you money. We're gonna kind of showcase a old style of trailer that we used to use, kind of the conventional thinking of slap more steel on it, make it I-beam, piece it here with a gusset, have another piece, a ton of joints and things like that put together on that front end. And instead of thinking that way, we've thought outside of the box and really tried to redefine how we engineer these trailers. And again, Seth is gonna elaborate on this and show you how we do a one piece steel front end on these goosenecks. Something that isn't really intuitive um, if you're not looking at the stress diagrams on a trailer is that trailer uh, structures, they don't like joints or sharp corners, right? So kind of with that conventional design of beam where there's a beam here and a beam here and then kind of a big gusset, there's all these sharp corners and joints and the stress really gathers and concentrates in those areas right. and that's where it's going to start to crack as um as you know as time goes on and it's seeing those load and unload cycles 
with this one piece design there just isn't any joints in the entire gooseneck beam it's right. just it's just um smooth right so instead of your stress having to concentrate in different areas it's just nicely following the profile of the beam on the top and the bottom from your truck all the way to your axles and it's just a nice smooth clean sweep and that distributes the weight evenly throughout instead of compressing it to a certain joint or a certain spot, right? Correct. Customer feedback. Obviously, we take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, what is our process there and how do we kind of deal with it? Yeah. Every week on Monday, we review uh, all of the warranties that came in and all of the customer feedback that comes in. And we review that as a team with the engineering team, the production team, and the ownership team. Uh, and we make game plans on how we can address that as quickly as possible. Okay. And then each day, the engineering team is also reviewing any new warranties that come in uh, so that we can address those as close to real time as possible. Can you give me an example of maybe something that's come in and what we've done to improve it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, a recent improvement would be um, our trailer ramps. So we had some uh, customer feedback that the ramps were a little bit, uh, I guess they were a bit heavy to use and then they were underperforming for the amount of, the, the weight of the machinery that's being loaded by these ramps. So what we did is uh, with the, the engineering process, we found ways that we could uh, increase the strength of the ramps um, by changing certain key components of the structure uh, while actually making them lighter weight. So. Uh, we reduced the weight of the ramp that the user feels when they're lifting it by about 20 pounds and we also made them about 50% stronger. Pretty easy going up and look at this, soft going down. I just wanted to say thanks to Seth and his team for all the quality work that they've been doing. Overall we have three different brands. We have the Royal Cargo brand which is the cargo trailer. We have the Southland Trailers brand, which is our dumps and flats. And then we also have the big commercial, which is the Wren. And the unique thing about Southland Trailers overall is we have those three different brands, but use the same technology to try to spread that technology and what we learn from something heavy in the commercial industry to bring it down into our goosenecks and into our dump trailers and into our cargo trailers and vice versa. So, so I think something we learned over the past uh, 20 years or so is that uh, having one engineering team to work on those multiple product lines really helps us with that knowledge share and um, yeah, combining our, combining our teams to uh, ensure that we can produce every different trailer possible uh, with the best technology possible. And that's something really unique, taking the sill design from a gravel box industry carrying heavy amounts of weight and bringing that down into our dump trailer and now having the number one dump trailer on the market taking technology from our Ren line and bringing it down into our gooseneck models and making them the lightest on the market in a steel flat deck gooseneck trailer. Um, and again, the just overall technology sharing from value stream to value stream is very unique with us. So uh, something that is cool and everybody should be aware of and why we wanted to kind of showcase it today. So we'll definitely bring Seth back and the engineering team back to go through a dump trailer, cargo and a Ren style of unit to really showcase these unique features and benefits and why they can benefit you in the end.